Hi, my name is Gina Incruzio, and I'm a senior at Florida State University, majoring in information technology with specialization in information organization and architecture. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to do remote desktop. This is a really good thing for you to know because this way you could leave your home computer running and then access any of the files on it from another remote location. Okay, so first we're going to start on this computer. This would be my home computer, which I would leave set up running at home. Now, we need to make sure that all the correct remote desktop settings are in order. So in order to do this, you click on Start and Control Panel. Into your control panel and your network and internet connections, you'll look on the left hand side for a remote desktop link. Click on this. This will pull up a system's property menu with many tabs. The one you want to concentrate on is the remote tab. You always want to make sure that the allow users to connect remotely to this computer is checked. This allows people to send invitations to this computer and access it from a remote location. You can also click on Select Remote Users to choose users that are already registered on your computer and give them access to access this computer remotely. This is all we need to do, so we click OK. And now we're going to be done with this computer and move on to our secondary or remote computer that would be at another location. OK, now we're ready to work with our remote or second computer. This would be at another location and would be what we would want to use, possibly at work, to access files on our home computer. So here's how we would do it. These are the following steps you would take to access your home computer. Click on the Start menu. Point to All Programs, Accessories, Communications, and then click on the Remote Desktop Connection. This will bring up a window that will allow you to enter the information that we've already gathered from our home computer in order to access it remotely. You can either enter a computer name or IP address here. We've chosen to enter the IP address. The IP address that we know from the home computer is 192.168.1.1. Now, username and password don't have to be filled in at this point, and neither does a domain name. Once it's connected, it will ask you for these things. We can look at these different tabs and configure how we want our remote desktop to work. You can change the display of your home computer. You can also change the devices that you will be able to connect to on your home computer from this computer remotely. An important one that you would want to consider checking would be the disk drive box. This would allow you to copy and paste files, documents, and programs from your home computer and then access them remotely on the second computer. If this box is left unchecked, the only thing you would be able to do would, cop would be to copy text to the clipboard and then transfer it this way. If we go on to the next tab, you can choose any startup programs you would like or you can choose your connection speed and allowing the following to optimize your performance. We don't really need to check any of these, so we're just going to leave it at this. Now we're going to click connect in order to connect to the home computer. A warning will come up telling you that because the following devices, the disk drives have been made available, that it could be potentially unsafe and you should only do it if you trust the computer you're connecting to. Because the computer I'm connecting to is my home computer, I trust it, so I'm going to allow this and click OK. You can connect remotely to our home computer. It'll prompt you for a username and password, which you enter. And there you go. This is the desktop from your computer that you left at home, complete with all your files, documents, and programs. Now you can minimize this window, shrink it down a little. That way you can view both the remote desktop itself and this um, in the computer you're actually working on. Now this document here is one that I need for work, which is the whole reason I access my computer remotely. In order to copy it from this desktop at home to my remote computer's desktop, I would right click on it, click copy, mouse over anywhere into the desktop area of the remote computer, and paste. There you go. That's a very simple way to get your documents from your home computer into your work computer without having direct access to your home computer. In order to end my session, I can maximize it, go to the Start menu, and click Log Off.
It'll ask me if I'm sure I'd like to log off, and I'll click log off. This is logging me off of my home computer. It would do everything it would do as if you normally click log off on your home computer, save your settings, and shut down your screen. There you go. Now you're back to your remote computer where you can access the same document that's on your computer at home. Once again, my name is Gina Ancuzio, and today I showed you how to access your files to remote desktop. Hopefully you'll be able to use this feature sometime if you ever need to access files while you're at work or just forgot to bring some things with you that you needed. Thank you.